Hey there, Taurus. Uh, welcome to your reading for the middle of September 2021. Um, we <laughs> got cards jumping out all over the place, so it could be a very active month for you, I would say. Um, there you go. But uh, we're going to see what's going on for you for the rest of September. I'm going to do a Celtic cross uh, because I, I don't know, feel like it. So that's what we're going to do today. But uh, let's see what is coming up for you for mid-September. Uh, as always, I will be um, clarifying some of these cards as well. But uh, let's see here. And yeah. Uh, looks pretty good. Uh, and the area of your present energies, you have the Six of Wands here. Uh, six of Wands can be a card of success, but it can also be a card of difficulties as well. Uh, you know, I feel like, it, in, in, um, you know, what I should say is it's really a good card because, you know, of difficulties. It's basically saying that you have moved past some difficulties. This guy on the horse, he's been to war, and so he's experienced loss and all these other things. He's being cheered on now, but it's like he's experienced all these difficulties. The only problem I see with this card in your reading is that sometimes I think, well, you know, after a very difficult period of time, we can, uh, you know, start a business or something, or we can get a job, and we can get into this uh, kind of like comfort zone where it's like things are kind of better than they were, so we just stay where we are. <laughs> and um, so there's like no, you know, to me, th this with the two wands crossing you right here, Taurus, what I'm trying to spit out of my mouth is that this could be kind of like a comfort zone, basically, the two cards together. Uh, sometimes I think, and, you know, again, where it's like we're fearing, you know, maybe things were so bad in the past in some area of your life that you finally get to a, kind of like a somewhat decent place, right? And you don't want to lose it. So, um, you know, the two wands kind of crossing can represent not being willing to take new risks, not being willing to continue to grow and all those other things. But Really, that's the only risk, is not taking a risk <laughs> with the two of wands. So I do feel that it is time for you to kind of like put yourself out there, take bigger risks, uh, look for areas that need growth as well in your life. I feel like that would be a good idea. Uh, even though this is a crossing energy, and in the near future you have the Eight of Swords, which I feel like you've been getting recently, the Eight of Swords, uh, Taurus, what I would say here is that stepping out of a comfort zone will probably lead to a lot more success in your life. Uh, in the area of your thoughts, you have the lovers. Some of you definitely could be thinking about love, no doubt about it. And uh, we see great stuff as far as love is concerned here. Uh, even at the end, Ace of Pentacles, it is a good card for opportunities, something that has a lot of potential, but it can be a good card for love. I consider the Ace of Pentacles to be the path to marriage actually as well. So to me, it can say that there's new love coming in. Uh, for most of you, I feel like this is talking about you hoping to regain some sort of balance. You know, just looking around here, uh, this is not, you know, this is not accurate tarot, although I don't claim to read accurate, accurate tarot, right? <laughs> I, I read intuitively. And what I would say here is intuitively, it's like I feel like you're on the right track. Like let's say you're working on a project right now, Taurus. It's like I feel like you're on the right track, but it's like something needs to be balanced out here. Um, and it's almost like something inside of you. So some of you, it's like maybe you feel insecure. Maybe you feel like you're afraid to ask for money if you're working on a project, for example. Or maybe you're afraid to raise your prices in your business. Maybe you're afraid to ask for a raise or a promotion at work. It's like that type of feeling. But I, but again, I feel like it's um, you selling yourself short. And I feel like this is saying that one side or the other needs to come into balance, either the masculine or the feminine here uh, on this card because the masculine could be like the more aggressive asking for something side. The feminine could say that like in work or business, something just needs a little bit more nurturing, a little bit more caring, right? And I kind of get that here for you, Taurus. Uh, we're going to clarify this at the end. Like I said, we're going to pull some clarifiers and see what's going on here. Uh, in the area of your foundation, uh, what is supporting you, you have the Six of Pentacles. I feel like you have a good idea of what, like, like, you know, Six of Pentacles, he's giving to one person. It's like if you, if there's something inside of you that needs more attention or energy so that you can, you know, raise, get a raise or get a promotion, make more money in your business, or, you know, this could also be asking for love as well. It's like, you know what needs nurturing with the Six of Pentacles. Pentacles. This is what's supporting you. I also feel that there are a lot of people who want to help you. Uh, over here in the area of your future feelings, you have the Seven of Swords, which, you know, the Seven of Swords could be lying, cheating, stealing, but it can also be an energy of being a lone wolf. And it can say that you're not asking for help from other people. And it just says, ask for help 
from other people <laughs> and you will be very successful. In the area of the past, you have this Four of Wands card. Could be marriage. Some of you could be going through divorce or separation. Uh, I feel like this is a little bit bigger picture though. These people are celebrating and it's like you're on this side of the card, but these people are celebrating over here. So I feel for a lot of you, it's like you could be working on ideas or plans. And it's like maybe in the past you thought certain ideas or plans were gonna lead to a celebration. I just feel like it hasn't gotten to that to this point yet, which is kind of interesting. Uh, normally the past position I say, like you're you you are moving away from this energy. I feel like saying you haven't gotten this yet, whatever it is. So for some of you, I feel like the celebration is still available to you here, uh, Taurus. And uh, in the area of your near future, you have the Eight of Swords. And this, we could look at this as a challenge, but I kind of feel that this is more, not really a challenge. It's just a realization that you need to have. We're gonna clarify this and see what ca we, card we get clarifying it, but it wouldn't surprise me to get a card like the Hangman or something like that, that would represent a realization, enlightenment, atten you know, att attention being brought to what needs to be done. But the Eight of Swords can represent kind of being at the end, feeling like you're out of ideas. You know, she feels like she's out of ideas, but actually if she would just, you know, as I always say, if she would just lean up against one of those swords, she could cut her hands free and then she could take her blindfold off and she could see a way out. It's kind of like a one dimensional card. You know, I always say eight of swords is like thinking one dimensionally when there could be like multiple ways for you to accomplish anything that you want to accomplish. And so it reminds you to kind of like look for ways to accomplish things. Uh, this could be through doing research or um, finding just other ways to do things. In the area of the next few months, you have the Empress, so glow up vibes, love it. Definitely very good, uh, abundant energy here. So I do feel like you could be entering into more abundance with this card. I also feel like you're kind of like setting new goals here. It's like we have this wreath right here at the top of the Six of Wands, just like on the World card. That wreath represents accomplishments or uh, reaching goals or accomplishing goals. She has one around her head as well. She has like two crowns on her head and one of them is wreath. So it kind of represents accomplishments and things like that. I get this energy here in just your reading overall. Like I would try to put yourself in situations where it's like you have to push yourself just like a little bit farther than you normally would. Like especially in work, career, business, whatever it is you do to make money, I feel that there could be a lot of opportunities where um, you're gonna have to like force yourself and you're gonna have to put yourself in situations that maybe push you outside a comfort zone, but the amount of abundance that's gonna come in from that is gonna be quite a bit, is what I would say here, Taurus. So like, you know, what could this be? It's like, maybe you normally wouldn't want a leadership role or a leadership position. Put yourself in that position. It doesn't mean you have to stay there, but just, you know, the simple act of doing it is gonna cause a lot of growth. Uh, so maybe you have to put on a presentation or speak in front of people or something. You know, like whatever it is, doesn't matter. Uh, same thing in love as well. You know, the Empress could represent going out, meeting people, uh, putting yourself in positions to meet people, you know, like all sorts of stuff. But uh, I would definitely do that with this card. Uh, next in the area of your closest relationships, you have the Seven of Wands. So I would definitely open up in your close relationships. Part of me does feel like if you, like as far as family and friends are concerned, I do feel like you're feeling very, like a more protective energy or over those people or you're wanting to protect those uh, people around you. I feel like you're wanting to kind of like keep people close to you, you know, which, um, you know, that kind of makes sense, I guess, you know, at this time. And I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing either, Taurus, like keeping people uh, close at this time. But it could also be you preventing um, people from, you know, coming in. So if you want love, I would definitely open up with this uh, card here. It can be a little bit of a closed off energy. Uh, in the area of your future feelings, you have the Seven of Swords here. And the Seven of Swords can be lying, cheating, stealing. But again, as I always say, it can also represent weakening something uh, that could be causing you problems. He is stealing these swords from an army that's back here on the card. Uh, you know, traditionally, Seven of Swords can actually be a card of like that symbolizes luck coming in the future as well. The color, it's like this yellow golden color, which represents like luck in the tarot. And he is like trying to weaken something 
Uh, that could be, you know, attacking him in the morning, basically, on the card. But for a lot of you, this could represent needing to kind of handle things delicately. He's holding these swords by the tips right here, Taurus. And, you know, if he were to, like, grab onto them, he would get cut. So he has to, like, handle a situation with care and delicately. But I do feel like some of you, again, like I was saying, could be putting yourself in positions that push you outside of your comfort zone. Feels mostly like work to me, but it could be you know, any area of your life here, Taurus. And I feel like this is saying that you need to kind of like see how you can, anything that has like control over you, like this milit this army has control over him in a certain way, or could <laughs> if he if he didn't steal those swords from them. It's kind of like saying anything that has control over you, whatever it is, feelings, internal feelings, external feelings, external people, external situations, whatever. Uh, this is about kind of like looking at those situations and like, just saying to yourself, how can I, um, you know, take some of my power back? That's what I feel like you're doing here with that Seven of Swords. Uh, your outcome is the Ace of Pentacles. So if you do all this, I feel like your outcome is just basically saying the sky's the limit, or there is no limit. Ace of Pentacles is a card of potential. It's, it's only limited by you. You are the only person that limits the Ace of Pentacles. So Basically, you can accomplish whatever the hell you want at this time, Taurus. Very positive outcome. Uh, really good for love as well. Uh, I want to dig into this a little, like, um, actually a lot more, <laughs> probably a lot more than I have for other people because uh, this is very detailed. But uh, I want to look at this four wands first in the past. Two wands. What did I say? Uh, two wands. Pushing yourself outside a comfort zone. Again, it was your crossing energy as well. Um, so the only thing that's holding you back really could be you at this time. Uh, with this energy. So that's what I would say there. Uh, with the Six of Pentacles as your foundation, you have the Page of Cups. Uh, I was kind of getting this feeling for you here. Page of Cups could be love, you know, could be an admirer, all sorts of stuff. But I, like, I just get it more about like your vision. It's like you understand that there are certain things that would make you happy. I feel like you understand that there are certain things that would make you more free with the Two of Wands show, and the Four of Wands. By the way, Four of Wands, Card of Freedom. It's like you understand that there are certain things that will help you uh, do that. Feels like a little bit of a dream right now. So it's like you're still trying to manifest this on Earth. Page of Cups, card of imagination. He is imagining that fish that's in that cup. So he needs to like figure out how, you know, do I create my own reality? He's like, has, he has all those questions, right? Like how do, how am I going to create this business or how am I going to create whatever your, your life is, like whatever you want your life to be? There are like a lot of questions here. In the area of your thoughts, yeah. Like I said, tons of potential. You have the uh, high priestess. She basically represents potential, if I can get her to focus. There's no roof over her head. And again, it kind of represents the fact that there is no limit to what she can accomplish. Uh, but it's a mystery. <laughs> as to how she is going to accomplish things. She's like waiting for enlightenment. Even there's this big sun uh, up here behind the angel on the lovers. And like I was saying with the Eight of Swords, you know, I feel this energy of like enlightenment or uh, waiting for enlightenment basically. Uh, with the Eight of Swords here, Queen of Swords, yeah, I like waiting for answers, waiting for the clouds to clear. I don't think they ever will clear, you know, is what I would say to you. I feel we really have to, you know, take action. Um, you know, is what I would say at this time, um, especially with like, you know, like the restrictions that we're all dealing with and things like that. Like these things are not necessarily going to go away. And I'm not making a political statement here. I'm sure, you know, I'm going to get a ton of antsy people in the comments. But what I'm what I'm saying here is it's like once the government takes something, it's like they're, they're not going to give it back. And again, not a political statement. This is an astrological statement. Look at the astrology. We had Saturn and Capricorn. It's all about restrictions and things like that. But it's also about us needing, you know, Uranus and Taurus is about us needing to kind of like take our freedoms back. And I'm not talking about revolution. So, be, you know, before you get all antsy, like I said, to those people that get upset about this stuff, I'm not talking about like having a revolution or anything like that. But what I am saying is it's like, we, you know, I feel like everybody's waiting for permission to do things at this time. The only person that can give you permission is us. And it is like cherry energy. Yes, there might be certain rules, regulations, things that we have to follow. There might be certain, you know, things that we do feel like are holding our, ourselves, you know, are holding us back. But we have to do as much as I, as we possibly can, you know, within the limitations. And uh, we see that here with the Seven of Wands. With the Empress here, you have the Seven of Pentacles. I feel like more progress coming in for you. Seven of Pentacles, he's really looking at those Seven Pentacles that he's grown. And he's like saying, can I get more? out of the situation 
you know, is there, is there more potential for me? Is there more potential growth, more abundance? I feel like these are the questions that you're asking. Remember what I said at the beginning of the reading, it's like you're at this place where it's like, maybe it's good, but it could be a hell of a lot better. And uh, I feel like you need to, like, I feel like you're, I feel like you are naturally wanting to like live your life you know, to its limits, <laughs> or I don't think there are any limits. And maybe that's the wrong word to use here, Taurus, but I feel like you want to, you know, live the best experience you possibly can. Let's put it that way, right? And I feel like that's what everybody should do. And like I always say, I always get comments from people who are like, well, why can't you just be happy? And also those people are losers, Taurus, right? The people that want you to settle. So I always say to people, people always like say, how much can you create? How much can you want? As, long, as much as freaking possible, right? Um, so I would say, don't listen to the to losers, basically, that just want you to live, you know, on um, the littlest you possibly can, right? Uh, with the seven of wands here, you have the eight of wands. Quick movement forward here is what I would say. Uh, I feel like there is could be a lot of social energy as well. This is the area of your closest relationships with the eight of wands, and eight of wands is a card of socializing. Um, you know, it's a card of talking to people and things like that. Again, yes, there might be certain restrictions depending on where you live. But what I would say here is like, we have the internet, you know, we're not living in caves anymore. So I would say communicate with as many people as you possibly can, even if it's online or whatever. Socializing is going to be very beneficial. Uh, in the area of your future feelings, Seven of Swords, you do have the tower here as well. Like I said, uh, we had Saturn in uh, Capricorn like a couple of years ago. We're still dealing with that energy, I would say. There's like, I mean, to me, there's like other things that we're dealing with that are a very similar energy. And what I would say here with the tower is it's like one of those things. If the universe is asking us to change or to make some sort of change in our lives um, and we don't make the change, the tower is basically the universe coming in saying, okay, I'll make the change for you. <laughs> so I always tell people when the tower comes up, don't, don't worry, don't freak out, right? Uh, to me, the tower is necessary. It's part of life, and you know it's something that we always have to deal with. Um, but the tower, you know, the people inside that were inside the tower, they built up the walls around them too high, and they didn't see any outside, you know, any outside views. They didn't see any other ways of doing things, like in work or business or in their love life. They only stuck to one way of doing things, and that's why the tower is crumbling. And so I always tell people um, when the tower comes up, just look for other ways of doing things. If you are finding yourself in like work or business relying on the same old tricks, try something new because, you know, it'll just help you diversify. It'll help you um, make things more secure, more stable. Same thing in love as well. It's like we get into relationships. We do the same thing over and over and over again with the person that we're with. This is just saying, you know, try new things with that person. Do something new. Go on a vacation. Uh, spend time. Try a different. Watch, have a movie night. Go on a date night. Switch it up. If you go out on a date every Tuesday, that gets pretty boring. Go out on a Friday, right? <laughs> go to a different restaurant, something. You know, this just basically says, uh, you know, to me, the energy I'm getting here is just saying, it's like saying mix things up so that things don't get stale, you know? Uh, for your outcome, you have the full, definitely very positive new beginning coming in for you here. You have a lot to look forward to here is what I would say here, Taurus. I feel like there are like uh, there's like a lot of growth, a lot of potential. I think that one thing you need to remember is I can't remember who it is. I can't remember if it's Jim Rohn. I think it is Jim Rohn who talks about, uh, you know, he's a success speaker or whatever. And he talks about how, um, you know, he basically says how high do trees go grow and they grow as much as possible, right? And like, that's what I was like saying here. I feel like that you're your potential is unlimited at this time. So it's like saying, grow as much as possible, as much as you possibly can, and don't put limits. It's like, you know, I, I see people do this all the time where they make a certain amount of money or they think, oh, I'm going to start this business. And then they get to a certain level and then they, I think they start, like, we, you know, happens to all of us, right? We start to like panic or we start to worry like, oh, I'm making all this money, but it's like too much. We like, we put these like random limits on ourselves. And I feel like this is saying, don't put limits on like what you're, on your potential because it's probably a lot more than you think. Uh, same thing in love as well. It's like, I think we settle for people who aren't good for us or we settle for situations uh, that aren't good for us. The other thing that I think we do in relationships is we allow people to cross boundaries because we're afraid of like losing the person when it's like allowing them to do that in the first place does create the loss, right? So I feel uh, this is a pretty deep reading because I feel like you're looking at all these things in your life, Taurus, but it's going to lead to a lot of growth. And again, with Uranus in your sign, uh, there's a major focus on your values, what you do value, like what you're willing to put up with, uh, how the freedom in your life, what you're willing to accept, uh, how you want to live your life. These are all major questions that you're going to be dealing with for like the next 
four years-ish, somewhere around there. Uh, kind of like three and a half-ish, somewhere around there. <laughs> like I said, I don't know, I'm terrible at math, Taurus. But uh, the point is, is you know, it's going to be a good thing. So uh, I like this reading. Thank you for being here, Taurus. Really appreciate it. Uh, make sure to watch your sun, moon, and rising for a full picture of what's going on for you at this time. But thank you, and definitely enjoy your month.